The Last of Us continues to be a oddly decent TV show with uh, plot and storylines and things happening. Although today we have had a rather sudden pause in things happening. So the first two episodes, there were sidetracks, flashbacks at the beginning that felt a little bit out of place because they kind of just stopped the story and went like, hey, we're in Bangladesh now, or hey, this is before the outbreak, and they didn't quite fit into what was happening. In this episode, we start by saying, hey, this is nice, there's no flashback. The entire episode's a flashback. A flashback that uh, provides remarkably little for me. Like, this was a weird episode of where I'm just sitting there like, okay, this is cute. In fact, okay, this is an episode that is kind of difficult to talk about, I guess, from, from, the, from the critique perspective. Because on the one hand, it delivers a gay romance that is probably one of the best I have actually seen in recent history, with the possible exception of the Orville's little uh, pseudo-gay romance, because... It does it very well. Like, it is not over, it's not political, it doesn't try to push an agenda. It's not a gay romance, it is simply just a romance. Which is what it should be. But for somebody who doesn't know about the game, it just feels like the story just comes to a screeching halt for an entire episode. Which leads us to an interesting discussion about whether that's good or bad, and I'm leaning towards good, because it's, it's the wider audience question, isn't it? So many shows have yes. been ruined by the wider audience. So... Yes. Case in point being Halo, because Halo did that. Halo tried to make it like, okay, let's not do any references to the game and just completely do something different. And that went terribly, Awful. didn't it? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you're making an adaptation of something, odds are... You are doing it first and foremost for the people who like that thing. Yep, and it should appeal to the people that actually like those things. So making it about these characters and focusing on these characters rather than trying to make it gamey, because in the original story, it was very much a very gamey quest. So you met Bill, and Bill's like, hey, do a thing for me, and you can use my truck, and then that was kind of it, and you just moved on. More or less a fetch quest, more or less. In the show, it's just a huge flashback sequence, which builds up Bill and Frank's relationship and focuses more on those two. Now, for the people that are watching the show just for the TV show, you only you don't really know why you should be interested in these two characters. But if you played the video game, you're like, oh, okay, we can see some of their life like during the outbreak when it happened, and then like how they met each other, and how the relationship formed, and sort of how they lived out their lives. And that gives you a sort of different perspective than the video game. It does add a new viewpoint uh, from the video game to show because while the show does an excellent job of showing you sequences from the video game, now it's adding a little bit of something new into the mix. Things that you never really got to see unless you read like the extra lore notes and stuff that you could collect. Oh, even then it actually drastically changes the story. Yes, it does. Uh, because in the video game, uh, Frank dies and they're estranged lovers. In the show, they actually, Frank doesn't wander off and die, and they're actually fairly happy, wouldn't you say? No, yeah, no, this is absolutely, like, the, the only <laughs> bit of drama they have is when, uh, I don't know, Bill and Frank, I don't know the difference between the two. Uh, Bill, Bill's the prepper guy, Frank is okay. the guy that played the piano. When, when Frank's ha Frank has a woman moment, and he's like, I need to restore the boutique, <laughs> Bill, and Bill says, that's a waste of wood. <laughs> I mean, true. <laughs> like that—that's their only real disagreement. Otherwise, they live a, a great, light, loving life in their little uh, walled-off community. <laughs> okay, right. They're gatekept. I, I gotta point out as well. This this show sends some mixed messages here. <laughs> yeah, this episode was surprisingly base, especially at the beginning. Oh like, yeah. Very. You got Bill in his basement with his pump-action shotgun, looking, literally looking up at the the Hydra or Fedra or whatever agent. Yep, and, Fedra. Yeah, yeah, going like, not today, Fed boy. Not today, Fed boy. <laughs> as they're as they're walking around collecting people and gathering them up and moving them into QZ zones, he was like, he was aware, he was prepared, and he was already hiding underneath like a, a like a secret basement, is what it sounded like. 
yeah, like he he was a full on prepper guy, and then he has a cool scene where he goes out and just does some shopping. Yep, and turns the power back on. Basically, carves out his own little section of this community and walls it off, setting up booby traps and stuff. Yeah, it was actually a really great scene. But it is thing, right? Okay, what they they there is a way to please both audiences here. I think there is a way to make this a scene that somebody like me cares about and still is an interesting one for the uh, fans of the game. Because in many ways, this is kind of a fan fiction, fan service kind of scene where these two get to have a happy ending, whereas in the video game, they had a very, very bad ending. Yes, Bill literally is in his house, like depressed about everything. And Frank, you know, left him. And the note that he gets is basically him telling him that Bill ruined his life. Yeah, like, fuck you, I hate you, I don't love you anymore. Yep, like it's 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 completely the opposite. And while this is actually it was a very nice scene and actually made me like, oh, you know, that's actually pretty nice that things worked out for them. But the reality is that's actually not what actually happened. Yeah, so this was kind of fan servicey, which is yep, entirely fine. Because again, it is better than the alternative, as the alternative is basically awful. The alternative is that they didn't make it for the fans. You know, I think uh, mainly I, I think there could be better pacing of it because the whole um, Bill and Ted, I want to call them now, Bill and Frank scene lasts from, let me see, round about the 15 minute mark all the way to the round about hour mark. So it's 55 odd minutes or 45 odd minutes of these two characters that I, as somebody who hasn't played the game, have just no idea who is. Yeah, it, that's going to be a big problem because if you're not primed and you don't know Bill and Frank and the fact that this is, it sort of just happens as this episode begins because like, you know, they're recovering and they're on their way to go see Bill. And then all of a sudden we get like a flashback cut of like, you know, 2003 when the outbreak happened, basically, you know, the morning of. And that's just kind of like, if you don't know anything, like that's just weird, you know, like, why should I care about these characters? It's going to be hard to. And then they're and then at the end of the episode, they don't really matter anymore. It's like, yeah. yeah. It's, it like, feels like a, a weird <laughs> injection. I think it maybe would have worked better as kind of. Joel telling this story via flashbacks. So it's like, yeah, so I met these two guys and they've got like a whole a whole village and shit. Like a village? How did they get that? Well, you see. And then you go back to, not today, Fred boy. Sets up his old, <laughs> old thing. It's like, but you said there were two of them. Oh, yeah, no. He met this other guy one day. How did he meet him? Well, he fell into his trap and so on, you know. To kind of keep touching grass, I guess. To, to kind of keep touching back to... Uh, Joel and Forehead Woman uh, as they continue their travels across America. Yep, as they make their way closer. And then what they could have done is it could have ended before all the stuff that happened in the end and then Joel and Ellie piece together what happened together through vi the use of visual storytelling. Yes, I think that would be nicer. I think it could have been cut more effectively and slightly differently because for me at least the story got very predictable. Like, one of my, my main complaints with the uh, the gay romance scene is that uh, Frank, I think, Frank comes across as way too seductory to begin with. Like, it, my gaydar was going off <laughs> almost immediately, and I had no frame of reference for these characters. Yep. It was, he was laying it on thick. The actor who played Bill also played Ron Swanson, and He's phenomenal. Like, it doesn't... He, you don't really tell with him actually right away, but it sort of just comes out of left field for him. The other guy, you can sort of detect almost right away, right after he, like, Bill invites him in and he hops in the shower and starts talking. Yeah, he was he was laying it on so that I was thinking, like, almost like, oh, God, is this is this going to be a setup? Like, is he seducing him for a band of bandits that are going to break in or something? Because he, he was laid on a bit thick. And then you go on and they invite Joel and Triss, Tess, blah, 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 over. 
Um, and then there's a little, there's more story. They they grow strawberries. There's lots of stuff. And derpy derpy derp. And I, I feel like it could have been delivered in a way that would have made more sense from both perspectives, frankly. But yeah, this is nitpicky. This is this is really nitpicky. Because again, it is far better to see a show that specifically cares about its core audience first rather than anybody else who might be watching, frankly. I would rather see that, because I would prefer that if they were doing something about my setting. That's absolutely correct. And that was, it was nice that it was focused more on the fandom here, but it can, it's definitely going to be a thing for a lot of people to, I think, get over this this episode, because it's it's quite the departure from everything built up. Because if you, if you just saw the previous episode, you're like, oh, what are... What is Ellie and Joel going to do next? And then you see them for a little bit, and then you don't see them for, like, 90% for, of the episode until hour. the end. Yeah. Yep. So that's going to be, for those that are really invested in the Joel and Ellie story, but have no idea about these two characters, they're going to probably, you know, zone out a little bit, eyes gloss over, and be like, I wanted to know what happened with Joel and Ellie, and now they just got completely cucked out of that, and they're going to have to wait until next week. Yeah. Because again, uh, like, I, like I said the first time, for me, this show is... Eh. Like, it, again, I can appreciate the writing, because the writing here was pretty damn good. I can appreciate the acting, which is also, again, pretty good. The set designs are excellent. There's, there's a couple of details that miff me, like they still have wine left 20 years later, etc. It's like, yeah, that's... I feel like you would have run out. The gasoline still works. The generator is still functional. The gasoline and generators. Like, I can I can sort of believe the wine because they could probably pull for it through the various other houses. Trade and then there's it. a wine store. Trade for it if they run out. But, yeah, the gas, that would have turned to jello. That would uh, not be working anymore. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let me see here. Because uh, I was pretty sure... The storage life of petrol is one year when stored under shelter in a sealed container. It's been 20 years since the outbreak. This is also a problem with the video game as well, and a lot of, like, horror or apocalypse uh, scenarios. They sort of just sort of gloss over, like, fuel working to, you know, justify being able to get a vehicle running so they can move from point A to point B. Yes. But again, th it's... these are nitpicky things. Yep, there were some nice attentions to detail uh, to notice that are you can nitpick as well, like uh, the computers running like I think Windows ninety five or uh, Windows XP. Mm -hmm. Like that was a nice touch. Like it's like yeah, they're old monitors. Seeing that in the background in Bill's basement, it made it more believable because it feels like it's set in two thousand three. So it feels like it's in the appropriate time time point. Yes. Honestly, it's it's weird. <laughs> covering a show that's actually kind of good because I'm almost I'm almost wondering like huh, what what should I talk about I've already said that they did a good job you know it's 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 in a way it's nice it's like yeah you know the show was it was a it was passable it's not amazing it's not great it's passable and you know what that honestly is sad because we've reached a point where now it's like that feels like refreshing that a show is just passable Considering that Witcher blood thing that we watched, oh man. I, I would I would go one step further. I would actually say that this is pretty damn good television. Um, it's not I television that I would be directly interested in, probably. But it's pretty yeah. damn good television. Again, the sets are very nice. The uh, the whole little thing when he starts looting stuff and setting up traps was very Home Alone-y, which I quite enjoyed. <laughs> yes. They also had a that nice, nice. Uh, shot of him eating alone to kind of prime him for, you know, getting some company, etc. The best part is, I think when he was eating alone, I think he's still smiling. He seemed pretty happy, but the loneliness you think would kick in. Especially considering, you know, being there, what was he, like, four years, 2007, when he bumped into Frank? If I remember right, seeing the year date there? Like, four years or so by yourself? Oh, yeah. I mean, you'd probably That's a long go insane time. at that point, honestly. That would actually do some probably mental damage to you. That might have also been why he was so willing to, like, not be so hardline about kicking him out when he met him, too, and let him in. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted human companionship, the ability to talk to somebody. Yep, my Because we're social creatures. I'd like to see, I would have liked to see a little bit more on the raid, honestly, because 
Mm -hmm. Joel is like, you know, the raiders will come and try to take your strawberries. And he's like, we'll deal with them. And then immediately the next scene's the raiders show. And it kind of felt like the shows were just going through the motion at that point. It's like, well, yeah, we got to have the raiders. And then uh, Bob, Frank, boring name. Uh, Frank, you got it. Frank is the other guy. Frank, uh, Bill, no, Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill's the guy with the guns, yes. yes. Bill gets shot and he's like, uh, tell Joel I never liked him very much. Uh, like the keys are in the basement. I've got a checklist so that you don't die by yourself, woman. And she's like, you, you weren't. She, you won't die. You'll live forever. And he doesn't die. <laughs> and it just, it, literally, the scene ends with him like looking all. He's like he's about to croak. Like he's closing his eyes. He stops breathing. I thought like, he was dead. I actually, in our, in Dev's video, I don't know if it's in there still, but I swear to God, I, I'm like, he's dead. I, I, he died. Like, what? And then next scene, he's actually all better. And it's the other guy who's in a wheelchair. And I'm just like, yeah. It's, what? <laughs> we skipped some beats here. Like, this jumped a bit. It's like, actually, the other guy's dying. It's like, uh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> that was quick. That was, that was indeed <laughs> quick. Um, and I, I loved the last supper, the last supper they had, actually. That was really good, because they had had a lot of touches from their first scene. And I almost feel like, again, this is what it it could have had more time to to grow. Because it's like, okay, that, that was nice, because they're like, oh, they had, they've got the same wine, he's serving the same, uh, same dish, etc. That's great. But it kind of loses a little bit of the impact when it's in the same episode. You, know, you don't have as much of a relationship with the characters, kind of. Yeah. It isn't quite the same. Uh, I don't know. Like, when it comes down to the episode, I think it was passable. Definitely. I mean, it, like you said, it was probably the best gay romance scene. And honestly, actually speaking on that... Um, HBO shows generally have a tendency, even Rome, I like Rome so much, mm -hmm. but they have a lot of sex scenes in there where it's like they're flapping against each other. It's like, okay, like that's a bit too much. Like, it's like there's no story progression happening. It's just, you know, being a little bit like, you know, visceral or sexual to just be just to do it, just to tick that box here uh, in the quote unquote love scene. They they, you know, were getting romantic with each other. And then once the story information stopped happening, it just transitioned into the next scene very very classy instead of it being like weird and going into a lot of detail sort of like the last episode with the tentacles in the mouth where it was like you didn't really need yeah, to didn't really add anything that didn't add anything at all <laughs> it's also the final scene where you just kind of you see out of the window at uh, joel and ellie leaving in the car and they don't zoom too far out yeah, to see their bodies in the bed which is actually a very again tasteful choice of scenery yes so the, what makes me annoyed about this show is the fact that these the creators of this show most for the most part are doing a fairly good job of making it fairly respectful to the video game for the most part despite some of the re pointless I, I revisions would, i would say more so i would say that they are doing an excellent job for the most part from mm. what you guys are telling me like the fact that they recreated scenes from the video game basically shot by shot I mean, that's a hell of a yeah, lot better than anybody pieces. else has done. Halo never did that in a single fucking scene. I don't think there was one scene that was done shot for shot in Halo exactly. that reminded me about anything that had to do with Halo. Exactly. So in that regard, I think the show is doing an excellent job. Yes. Uh, I just, it, but that's what annoys me, though. But like this show did it, and no other shows are. There oh. are there are some changes that just feel like don't like me. again. They they try to explain the um, the day one outbreak here, and Joel's like, yeah. So the it got into the food supply, like in like in flour or something. Oh yeah. And like everyone ate it on the same day, and I was like, you're very optimistic, like. <laughs> The global food market isn't that unified. Like, you don't get flour from North America that gets eaten by everyone on the same day across the Earth. You don't get me wrong. The U.S. makes a lot of food. Not that much food. Yes, flour that's produced in one part of the country often won't end up in the other part of the country because, you know, it's just easier to, you know, it's a regional market, to regional bakeries. pricing, regional transport. Not to mention all so the of the... So the outbreak would be smaller. Uh, yeah, all of the systems around food safety and export as well. Like, it's just... It's a bad explanation. Yeah. And 
it it opens up plot holes with the story because there's no way the outbreak would have happened simultaneously across the globe. It would have happened in like Sri Lanka and then maybe some of the neighboring countries, but you would have seen very quickly everyone beginning to lock up. Because the thing is, we saw how COVID people reacted and that was a fairly like, it was basically like the cold, right? So here we have something that's way more deadly. That's actually like a, you know, extinction level event in terms of dangerousness. And there's there's letting it happen across the board like this would have been so hard locked down it would have been even insane there'd be troops on the street <laughs> like yeah. in day one <laughs> and not to mention too if this actually did get in the food surely the, they, nobody would be salvaging anything they, they go to like a diner later on and it's stripped bare how the fuck do people know what's safe to eat yeah, because you wouldn't know. So somebody, at some point, they had to have that information distributed among the population because if they're like, oh, the food's infected, well, then what about the canned food? Like, when was yeah. that canned? Was that canned, at the, you know, before that event? Or was that not canned before what that about, event? What, what about, about the flour? Jar? What about the fucking, like you said, the pancake mix? Like, this, the whole change from spores to tentacles, it's a terrible change. Like, it, it does far more damage than it does than it does good mm -hmm. and it's important to highlight that because if we were to if they didn't do that tentacle change to the spore change like the show would actually be on a whole another level it's just the pointless need to change that and it adds really nothing to the story i would say that bill and frank's change to the story adds a more happy spin on the story in, a, in a, what would otherwise be a fairly dark point. But that's the thing. That change is additive. That adds something to the story. Whereas the spore thing, that is subtractive. It removes things from the story because it removes the element of the masks, the airborne toxins, the need to be careful underground, etc. It removes an element of danger and it adds nothing. And the tentacles aren't a threat in any real way. They're still just zombies. The fact that it's apparently in the food is never mentioned, and apparently they're just happy stealing food from stores, etc. Like, uh, Bill and Frank never got sick. So it's... Yeah, because they would have been salvaging food from the stores. How would they have known? See, that opens up too many plot holes. Oh, yes, How does. would they have known that the bread was bad? Because even after the apocalypse and the weeks that followed, people would still be just eating up bread, grain, pancake mix. Some of that dried stuff would last much longer and they'd still be consuming it. So that doesn't make any sense. Like there would be a lot more dead people. There, I, I would, I'd have a hard time believing there would actually be effective QZ zones because they'd be distributing bread among them. Yes. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just a bad change and they make it worse by, by adding to it. Yeah, that's just a. Uh, that is the and this is important to point out. Like this is the this is the only point worth like focusing on really because it is it is the only bad point of the show. So credit to the show for only having one. I also plot don't like the whole mass execution grave they come across. Oh yeah, that I don't remember that in the video game at all. I it's I like, have no so, idea if that's in the video game. So in the scene chat, uh, I don't want to say chat viewers, <laughs> do you come across? They come across this mass grave. Well, they're not even buried. Just a pile of bones and whatnot. And they basically, Jill says, you know, if they couldn't fit you in the QZ zone, they rounded you up and shot you. Okay, so that's going to be very difficult because I know a lot of military people, and Arch knows a lot of military people. I think they're going to have a little bit of a hard time rounding up innocent, uninfected people and just bang, you know, ex like executing them. Yeah, mass blank. execution style. Like there would be massive like desertions there would be massive uh, military revolts different like divisions just not complying with orders yeah and they're just leaving them there too so i i call uh, like a group of military personnel even if they're they're federa right they're marked as federa so they're mm. is that's even worse that means that they're like uh, social uh, health workers you know yep and so these guys Apparently, with no military training, since it, they couldn't have had any. Like, I, I don't even understand how Fedra was established in like the the twenty four hours since the outbreak started, etc. So they're probably just regular police and military and federal agencies, etc. And you expect me to believe that these guys drag civilians out of their homes, women, then 
babies, gun them down in a ditch, and just leave them there. Like, come on. That's not a realistic mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah, that was that was one of the things that doesn't quite add up. I think the uh, Last of Us video game did a better job in the intro where he's got his daughter and she's twisted her ankle and she's hurt herself. And the soldier's like, what? You want me to do? But yeah. sir, they're civilians. Like he's, he's having a hard time following through with his orders because he's like doubting himself. And that was just one soldier. And he manages to work up the quote unquote courage to do it. That most people aren't going to be able to do that. Just shooting like children and women, or because these are people, these are your neighbors. These could be people, you know, your grandparents, like people, your families, your friends, or you know, your friends of family over there. Like everyone's interconnected in the country. Just shooting them point blank and having that one to uh, or zero to a hundred escalation is not something that happens very often historically. And when it does, it's normally not a very accepted case. In the case of like Germany. That took years of build-up for that to happen. Yeah. Now, I'm a little displeased about that. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure people now are going to be like, why are you so hypercritical? I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> I mean, this is the one point of contention that's always weird. And this isn't the only story that does that, actually. Arch actually raises a good point. A lot of zombie apocalypse games and universes always do that. They're like the real monster. Yeah, where the military are the soldiers and the humans. Guns down cities for for reasons. It's like the 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 humans are the humans are the real monsters. I always that was always my least favorite trope in zombie uh, storylines or like genre setting. It's like humans are the worst at monsters. Like no, I don't watch a zombie movie to see that humans are worse than the zombies. I want to see zombies be evil and do monstrous things. That's the whole point of the genre. <laughs> so. On the very bright side, uh, we have uh, we have a cameo from Kyle on the show too, in his form as Karalu, the Great Weasel of Lies. You don't have proof of that. False. I do. Uh-huh, and where would that proof He's be? He's right on screen now, let's look at him. See, many people may not have noticed, but the little uh, ornament on my lore videos, uh, there's, a, there's a weasel there. And in tiny inscriptions on its pedestal is Karalu, the Great Weasel of Lies. Yes. I don't know why, but he <laughs> puts little pictures of me in various artworks. It's mean, mean-spirited, always derogating poor Kib, putting me down. It is because he lies as he breathes. <laughs> I also, I also like the double suicide at the end. Oh God. Okay. Throughout the entire, I, sh I should have said that in the dev video, because throughout the entire video, I was like, yeah. I need to pump out some more homophobia. Dev expects it of me. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I couldn't really find anything to object about. I was like, yeah, this is, a, this is a pretty damn good romance. I don't mind this at all. But at, yeah, at Dev the was end, disappointed. <laughs> so Frank uh, wants to die. Because he's got some kind of disease, like he can barely walk, he needs to be helped with everything, and he doesn't want to be a burden to Bill, and he doesn't want to live in pain anymore, etc. You know? And so he asks Bill to crush uh, his sleeping meds into the wine so that he can drink it and die. And he lays out this whole scenario to Bill, and Bill cries, you know, but accepts, like, okay, we'll do it. And I was a bit worried that at the end he would he would die, and then Bill would be there, and he would just be a grumpy old man, like. Rrr, 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 rrr. <laughs> But instead, he, he crushes all of it in the wine bottle itself, and then uh, uh, Frank asks him, like, oh, you put it in the wine already, didn't you? Yep, enough to kill a horse. And then they just go yep. up to their bedroom, and they fall asleep together. Like, that was good. That, that was... Uh, well, <laughs> see... This is where the spicy. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is where the spicy should have come in. I, sh I, I'm cursing myself for not catching this. That is the point uh, when I should have said at least both of the gays died together. Oh my God. You missed that opportunity, but at least you got it here, right? <laughs> and what's funny is, what's actually kind of touching about the whole thing and scene is they open the window because they don't want the, <laughs> they don't want it to smell for when people come in. Yep. And they let leave a note saying it's unsightly. Everything we've locked, all the all the items are here. Here's the keys to access things. Here's the codes for the bunker. You know, good luck. Yeah, it's it's very nice. It's a good farewell. It make it and it wraps both of them up neatly. They died 
in as happy a circumstance as you can expect, I guess, during a fungal-infested zombie apocalypse. Well, all things considered, they actually lived out a pretty decent life. They did. Very comfortable. They even had strawberries. Yeah, and then they that were conveniently were shuffled turnips. out of the way when uh, Joel needed a car. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> they were in the way. <laughs> they were. Uh, uh, again, I um, that's that's the problem. I don't know how to praise a show honestly beyond saying like, well, this was good. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's all you gotta do. I know it's I know it's rare. We're not we don't do this often, but when there's a good show once in a while and it's actually worth watching, this is one of those uh, times. Thing is, one of those rare times. We if have you like The Last of Us. We have been conditioned to assume most of these shows are gonna be ass, but because the scarred even it has been <laughs> so long since a TV show has been made, observably so, for the fans of the thing they're adapting, that it just feels weird. Like, what do you mean you made this for the people who care? <laughs> Have you not been paying attention the last two decades? You're not supposed to do that. Yeah. You're not supposed to, but you do. And I get, like, the... I, okay, I am gushing a little bit about the gay romance because this is something that's annoyed me in so many goddamn shows where they, they shove in a gay romance and it feels rushed and it, it's forced and it's awful and it's just like, it's it's a gay romance rather than just a romance. And here, there's just two people who fall in love. I get that the start is a little bit forced because Frank comes across as, as openly seductory. And I feel like in the apocalypse, you're not going to assume that the first person you meet is going to be gay. Like, I'm going to start hitting on this guy, you know? You know, maybe he was desperate. Like, he was. He did say he was hungry. He's like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to make it after this. And honestly, I think at that point, he was playing all his cards. He's like, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going for it. Maybe, maybe, possibly. That would be one reason of logic that would back that up, that whole act. It's like, you know, I'm probably going to die. Like, yeah, might as well give it a shot. Mm -hmm. I do like the argument they have, like when they're arguing about the buildings, and he's like, "You think all the like the the government is a, is, is a fascist?" And he's like, "There are fascists. <laughs> they think they're all, the government were all Nazis. Like they are Nazis. They are." <laughs> the delivery was so fucking wonderful because it's like they are though. Oh my gosh, that was funny. That was kind of talking funny. to. That was a good scene. I enjoyed that scene. The, the first part of the episode is probably the best. The Doomsday Prepper. Yep. That was that was great. That was actually pretty great. But yeah, all in all, I'd, I'd say if you're not a fan of The Last of Us, uh, this episode's going to be a difficult one to watch. Just because oh, it doesn't really make sense. You're just going to sit there for a while and you're just going to be like, well... It's... Something is happening. I don't know who these characters are. But I'm presuming that it's going to matter at some point for some reason. And that's about it. And, and it kind of does. It, it kind of does because they get the keys and they get the do they get the truck that they need and they get the weapons they need. And that's where these weapons and these items come from. But at the end of the day, I think there was definitely a better way to have done this for for the uh, newcomer but at the same time it was done for the fans so at least it was done for I think the right reasons if they had to do it you know yes all in all surprisingly good though I will say if it ends up that the show in the end feels rushed this will have been a very wasted episode because it was nothing to do with the main storyline but now let's not uh, panic before that uh, becomes a problem Yep, we got a, quite a few episodes to go still before the season's over. Indeed. Oh god, I have no idea how we managed to talk for 34 minutes about this. Well, you know, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you know, you can talk about good things once in a while. Maybe maybe that'll be a new trend here. For one. Actually, I doubt it. <laughs> I think the next episode, if it's good, we're going to go for the shortest episode ever on my channel. It's just like, it's pretty good. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, and then just, just end it. Like, boop, gone. It's like, well, you got what you gave for it. <laughs> It'd be mildly funny, at least. But, uh, yes. Until next time, I've been Arch. And this has been uh, Carlo. Where do we stop Me, lice? Me, Kibbs. No. Goodbye. Have a good day. <laughs>